Pro Bowl QB takes on the Pro Bowl defense. But don't forget Eddie and the other Lewis. Baltimore's beat down the Titans five straight, but who's moving on now? In the NFC, Billy's got the boys back while the Panthers are on the prowl. Can Steven Davis run on Dallas's top-ranked D? How about them Cowboys? Where will they find offense? Dog, it is a hard-hitting day of playoff football coming your way on NFL Primetime. is presented by Miller Lite. Prime time is Miller time. Respect NFL prime time in full effect. Stuart Scott with you. Tom Jackson hanging over there. Chris Berman has ABC duty. Tom, unbelievable day of football. Mm -hmm. In the first game of the day, we had the NFL Offensive Player of the Year, NFL Defensive Player of the Year, and one of the co-MVPs. And there's a game like you like, kid, hard-hitting. Yeah, hard-hitting, running the football. And the thing that I think we learned today is how you respond to being on the road. We saw two distinctly different responses to teams being on the road. First up, though, the Cowboys, a franchise with 32 career, I say it's career, postseason games, postseason wins. The Panthers, a team with one postseason win in franchise history. There's Jake DeLone, first quarter Panthers, first drive of the game, third and three. DeLone getting his hook on with Steve Smith. Smitty's gone, 70 yards. Looks like he's going to the house. Brought down at the one-yard line. Steve Smith, 1,110 yards receiving on the season. One of the more anonymous 1,000-yard receivers. But next play, first and goal, Steven Davis, nothing there. Cowboys defense, number one defense in the NFL. Next play, Musa Muhammad could not get that. Boys only allowed 253 yards a game. Davis stopped short again. Panthers settled for a field goal. Been about Thales, you could give him a hug. He was happy about his defense. Second quarter, boys down six zip on the Panthers 20. Richie Anderson, <coughs> he coughed that up. Mike Mentor recovers. Panthers did not turn the ball over the entire game. Dallas had some costly ones. Later second, DeLone, Smith again. Slant, 15-yard gain. Smitty, 88 catches on the year. Later same drive, third and 10. Steven Davis, holla. I said, big boy, holla, Tom. My man, 23-yard touchdown. He had 1,444 yards. A career and a franchise high. TJ, what was going on with Q? Well, inability to run the football translates into pressure on the quarterback. That Greg Favors coming from the top of the screen, putting that pressure on him, getting the hand in the face. Again, Favors coming from up at the top of the screen, circling around, hitting Quincy Carter before he's ready to release the football. Now, Reggie Howard going to come around the outside. A lot of pressure, not coming in his face, but coming from the backside. And they, they figured out the snap count. Watch Chris Jenkins get off the ball one step before everybody else, destroys the blocking protection, and you can see he's pretty pleased. I, I like that dance by the big fella. And big boys dancing like that, man. We got to give him some love for that second quarter. DeLone was off the meter to Moosin Muhammad. Moosin fumbled it, got it back. Moose four catches 103 yards on the game. Tommy, this was freaky. What happened? Well, it's a great job of battling for the football. He took a lick not only from the front side, but the back side as well. Looks like the Cowboys was going to recover. He did a great job of fighting to get that football. Knew how important that possession was to the Panthers. That led to a field goal later in the third quarter. DeLome, 30, 24 yards to Muhammad. Jake DeLome, 18 of 29, 273. Same drive, third and three. Holla! <laughs> Steve Smith, a ridiculous catch. He had seven touchdown catches of the year. Tommy, how does he do it? Well, just a great job of going up. Very strong, very athletic, and very fast. Five minutes left in the fourth. Tar Heels! Tar Heel in the house. <laughs> Julius Peppers takes this one down to the 11-yard line. The Carolina Panthers in this game, first postseason team since the Steelers in Super Bowl 10. No turnovers, no penalties. And John Casey with that field goal, his fifth of the game, that ties an NFL playoff record. Five field goals in the game. Panthers won it 29 to 10 and in the Cowboys season. Unbelievable. Steve Smith, 135 yards receiving. I told you about Moosin. He had 103. Carolina all over him. Total yards, Carolina had 380. Dallas just 204. 
After the game, Bill Parcells talked about his team and what they could not get done. You know, when you have an opportunity here, you don't ever know whether you're going to get another one. You want to make the most of it. So I'm disappointed in that respect. But uh, I just told the players, I'm not going to rest. We're going, we're going to improve this somehow. You know, this was as a complete game as we've had all season. And, uh, you know, that's critical when you get into the playoff run, um, you know, that you play well during that stretch because it's, you know, one game elimination. And, you know, we were fortunate that we clinched a spot and we were able to rest up and freshen up our team. And, um, you know, we picked a good time to start clicking. In week 12, these two teams played. And look at the numbers. Very similar numbers week 12 and on Saturday, except this. The Week 12 numbers you see, now check out Saturday. It's the Panthers in the first half. They did almost as well, TJ, or better than what they had done in an entire game in the first half this game against the Dallas Cowboys. To reiterate the point, in that game in Week 12, Stephen Davis had 26 carries. Mm -hmm. In this game, he had 26 carries. Mm -hmm. That game, he had 59 yards. This game, 104 yards. What was the difference in Stephen Davis running this Well, I, I thought that the difference was the blocking. And we talked about the fact that the Dallas Cowboys wanted to run the football, but we knew that the heart and soul of what the Carolina Panthers was going to do was all about Stephen Davis. I think that his blockers realized that. Take a look at a few plays here. Watch the fullback, Brad Hoover. He's going to get the block. They're going to seal inside. They get a good push inside on that win. We'll take another look from the end zone camera. Watch that win get pushed just inside and then outside Brad Hoover's going to kick out on the backer and when he does he creates a nice seam. Stephen Davis hits it and when you get the big fella like that running like that he's going to get the extra 10 12 yards. They come across here watch Leroy Glover going to come across free. He's going to get trapped. It's a great job of adjusting to your blocking patterns. He blocks, Hoover blocks inside. You even get the block downfield by Musa Muhammad, and he's in for a 23-yard touchdown. We'll take another look at this one as well. Watch him come across. The tight end comes across. Hoover leads inside. You get the trap block right there on Wiggins. You get the seal. There's going to be one more block by Musa Muhammad downfield right there. And then he busted outside. He beats Mario Edwards, and he gets to the corner. So when they came out to play this game, they came out with the intention of, and this is what we need to see from teams who get to the playoffs, we are going to do what we do best. What we do best is run Musa Muhammad. He will set up things for Jake DeLome and our wide receivers. Tell you what, you know, we talked about this all year. The most important free agent acquisition in the offseason. Absolutely. Carolina Absolutely. Panthers getting Stephen Davis Absolutely. over 1,400 yards rushing. Also, don't sleep on John Casey. Told you about the uh, playoff record tying yes. five field goals. Remember back in against the Eagles, Casey missed three field That's goals right. and an extra point. extra point. Ever since then, John Casey 12 for 12 for field goals. Still ahead here in NFL primetime, Steve McNair, Mac9, co-MVP. If you want to know why he's a co-MVP, wait till you see the highlights of what he did on Saturday. NFL primetime. Presented by Miller Lite. Grab yourself a great tasting low carb Miller Lite. And in part by HR Block and HR Block Financial Advisors. And McDonald's. Miller, we brew great tasting beer because you can get in line and take what they give you or you can make your own choice. Miller, good call. wants to know who's your favorite NFL team Cowboys J -E -T -S, Jets, Jets, Jets. show off your favorite team's colors with this exclusive offer from Sports Illustrated free with your paid subscription I can't believe it start off with a long sleeve t-shirt of your favorite NFL team 
Pick a team, any team. The choice is yours. Come up to my team, baby! Go Steelers! Let's go back! Call now and you'll also get another free gift from Sports Illustrated. This Wilson Mini Football with the logo of your favorite team. Woo! Both are free when you order 56 issues of Sports Illustrated for only $1.59 an issue. Save more than 50% off the cover price. When you use your credit card, you'll also get this free stadium blanket from the NFL team of your choice, free. All this stuff for free, thank you, SI. Wear your team colors with pride with three great gifts, free from Sports Illustrated. Call now. Double. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Double. Is that nice. a double? Dude, it was a one bouncer in the bottom shelf. Fine, it's a single. That's I right, get my man's on first. And he's stealing. No, he's not stealing. He's it's just a straight rule. Can he steal? No, you can't do a straight steal. You can steal. the hardest hitting teams in the league, the Titans and the Ravens. You knew this one would be buckle it up. First one to flinch loses. I caught you there. You're flinching. The pregame drama was thick. Jamal Lewis, best runner in football against a Titan defense that was best in football at stopping the run. That block on Tennessee's shoulder, it's turned into a cinder block. Five straight losses to the Baltimore Ravens. You think Steve McNair didn't know about that? McNair trying to get a win for the first time in six games. Baltimore, though, stands in the way, including Ray Lou. And the NFL's most valuable defensive player, Pro Bowl linebacker, number 52, Ray Lewis. The best leader in sports. First quarter, though, the leader facing a hype Titan off. And Steve McNair, Mac 9 got wheels, nine yard run. That was a longer run than Jamal Lewis had all day. We'll talk about that later. Same drive, second and goal, half some. Rookie Chris Brown from Colorado takes it six yards to the house. TJ, how did he get in so easily? Well, we don't see Ray Lewis get blocked very often, especially down around the goal line. You're going to see the offensive line going to be reaching right. They come off those blocks eventually. They're going to start reaching and double team eventually on Ray Lewis. Backside pursuit can't catch him. Chris Brown finds the scene. That's as easy a touchdown as you will ever see scored against the Baltimore Ravens. It took two of them, though, on Ray Lou. Yeah, and look at Ray. He's pursuing to the football. He tries to stop. The double team comes, gets him from the backside. Who's fighting off about 600 pounds of meat? Later first quarter, McNair's pass tipped by Pro Bowler Ed Reed. Hater in the house. <laughs> will Dimps takes it 56 yards to the house. That's the fourth time in the last six games against Tennessee that Baltimore's had a defensive or special teams touchdown. A fellow named Russell Baxter schooled me in that. That tied the game at seven. Still first quarter, Jamal Lewis, not here, not now. He's struggling. Guy averaged 5.3 yards per carry in the season. Nothing going. Same drive. Are you kidding me? That's just hater. Samari roll, rattled and rolled him. Second quarter tied at seven. Third and two. McNair picked off by Ed Reed. Y'all, if you don't know, Ed Reed is a man. Had seven picks. Tied a team record during the season, but what happened when Eddie George tackled him? Yeah, it's great effort by Eddie George coming back to make this play, but you can see as he came across Ed Reed right there, he really put all his weight as well as Ed Reed's weight on his shoulder, and you can see immediately he's injured and frustrated. He would leave the game with a dislocated shoulder. Remember that late second quarter, Anthony Wright driving, rolls out, 11 yards pickup. A right. Next play, Ravens, first and 10 from the 24. Jamal Lewis gets only two yards, but flags it down. Tommy, who went temporarily postal? Orlando Brown uh, has a doing? little bit of a temper problem. <laughs> needs a hug, as you like to say. <laughs> he needs a hug, some loving. Unnecessary roughness, 15-yard penalty. Check out Ray Lewis on defense, Tommy. Tell the people why Ray Lewis is silly good. Watch Ray Lewis's angle of pursuit right there to Eddie George. He never takes a false step. He's directly to the football. He plays the passing lanes as well as he plays the run lanes. Watch him close on the football right here. Justin McCarris prevent him from getting a first down. Now he's going to make a read on McNair's eyes. McNair is going to start approaching the line of scrimmage and watch the closing speed by Ray Lewis. We're going to take one more look at it. Just watch where he comes from. He spots it. He sees the right angle and he delivers a boom when he gets to you. That's and those are all the things that make Ray Lewis the best linebacker, bar none, in the game. Eddie George went to the locker room, came back. 
and he asked the football gods for the gift of toughness, and it was granted to him. Can I get a first down? First Separated down. Separated shoulder and all. 7,000-yard seasons in his career. Same drive. Second and two. Mac 9 to Mac 86. McNair to McCarrens, Justin McCarrens. Holla at your boy. McNair, the only QB in football with the quarterback rating over 100. 49-yard touchdown pass, 14-10 Tennessee. Fourth quarter, Ravens driving right pass. Wrong dude, Samari Roll. Had six picks during the season, got another there. Titans ensuing drive, second and 13. George run left side, he and Ray Lou about to have a collision. And Tommy, they best friends, man. What's up with this? <laughs> <laughs> They're just saying, come on back. Let's do it again next play. <laughs> Later in the fourth, first and ten for Baltimore. You know, Ashton Kutcher punks people on MTV. Jamal Lewis got punked by Keith Bullock. Jamal, 14 carries, only 35 yards. Same drive. Rising from the heat is Todd. 35-yard touchdown catch. Pro bowler for the second time in three years. He had six grabs, 80 yards. Tom Wassey, Baltimore's best well, receiver. Now, now, they put Todd Heap out wide, got him on Tank Williams. Tank Williams actually played that perfectly. That was the strength of Todd Heap, and that's what's, what makes him such a great target for Anthony Wright, his size. And later in the fourth quarter, I think Orlando Brown needs to see Jack Nicholson's character in anger mismanagement. Another personal foul on Orlando Brown. Zeus, under two minutes left, Eddie George, y'all, was on the scroll. 25 carries, 88 yards. Next play, McNair, 13 yards to Derek Mason. Mac 9 at 159 yards passing. Coming down to a field goal late, both Craig Hendrick and Gary Anderson warming up. Hendrick, the guy with the stronger leg, but they go with the old guy. Anderson, 46-yarder, as cool as the other side of the pillow. Gary Anderson, all-time NFL leader in field goals and points, all-time NFL postseason leader in field goals and points. He kicks the Titans to a 20-17 win over the Ravens. That block, that cinder black time, that chip on Tennessee's shoulder, gone. Exercise after five straight losses to Baltimore. Tennessee beats Baltimore when it counts. 20 to 17, Eddie George, a man of a day. Steve McNair, an efficient day. But the man who won it, I don't know how Gary Anderson is, 63 times 67, <laughs> I don't know, 73, but my man was talking after the game. So thankful that I had the opportunity today and um, really, like I said, I feel honored to help this Titan football team get this monkey off our back against the Ravens. I don't think anybody gave us a chance to run the football like we did today, and and uh, that just shows you what, uh, what playoff time's all about. The goal wasn't the kids to come here and, and win, and that's it. You know, our goal was to get a championship, and it had to start here. It was just an off day for me, um, you know, and if we're going to go a long way, I got to do better than I did today. Uh, but like I say, it was a team effort. Even though we had the interception, the defense came out and played well, and that's what you're going to need. And, uh, you know, when I don't play well, the run the game has played well, and they did today. Always disappointed to come this far and to not uh, not win. Every team in the playoffs, except for one, is going to come away with this feeling. It's not a good one. Inside the numbers, if you double Eddie George's season yards, he had a thousand-yard season. If you double it, you still don't get what Jamal Lewis had during the season. But this game, Eddie George more than doubled Jamal Lewis. 88 yards, 88 tough yards for the former Heisman Trophy winner. Inside the Numbers, brought to you by Visa, proud sponsor of the NFL. Tennessee's defense held Ricky Williams to 37 yards. They held Deuce McAllister to eight. They hold Jamal Lewis to 35, but what stands out most about holding him to 35 yards? Tom? Well, they're aggressive this at the line of scrimmage, and I think that they're great tacticians when it comes to playing against the run. When you watch what they did to Jamal Lewis today, they were so effective at getting to the line of scrimmage and beating the blocker. First front we're going to see is an eight-man front by them. Keith Bullock is the guy who we have the target on. Alan Ricard is the fullback. Look where he meets him, right on the line of scrimmage, inside shoulder. So that's a stuff technique. Everybody else can come around. Great pursuit to the hole from the rest of his teammates. Again, this is second down and four. Same gift, eight in the box. Now it's Peter's uh, sermon. He's going to do the exact same thing. Fullback leading the other way. He hits Ricard. You can see it's right at the line of scrimmage. So before Jamal Lewis can find a hole, and he does get a little crack there, gets about three yards, but he's got five hats on the football. Again, same thing, eight in the box. And this is Keith Bullock again. Watch how quickly he's going to get up to the line of scrimmage. Knows exactly where he's going. Again, inside shoulder stuff. 
And this when he's going to push back in the hole. Ricard goes back in the hole, literally thrown right back on Jamal Lewis. And finally, a first down and 10. Peter Sertan going to come around. This is Javon Curse coming around. Flattens out down the hole. You wish you had the reverse on here. That's Peter Sermon there meeting the blocker in the hole, but it's caught from the backside anyway. So they are great tacticians at the line of scrimmage. They have great technique, but all of this keyed by the fact that he only had 14 opportunities to carry the football. When you're talking about a guy who gained 2,000 plus yards, you have to give him at least 25, 30 opportunities in a game that was close. Give him a chance to win it for you. He did not have that chance today. You heard, you heard that expression, dance with them that brung you? Yeah, I got you there. Brian Billick stood up his date tonight. And think yes. about this one. Think about this one. Ray Lewis had more tackles, 17, than the Ravens' entire team had carries. 16. And the other end of that is that you're asking your quarterback now, Anthony Wright, to throw the ball 39 times. Something bad's going to happen at least a couple of times. Really? <laughs> Still ahead here in NFL primetime. They used to be teammates, Brett Favre, Matt Hasselbeck. They will be opponents on Sunday. And Matt has a little payback in mind. Discover the amazing training secrets of Baseball World's Dynamic Practice Organization video featuring professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and his famous step-by-step -step building block approach to athletic training. These are the same techniques that have produced Baseball World's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU National Championship teams. Parents, players, and coaches are amazed at the rapid improvement of students using these principles, enhancing arm strength, running speed, quickness, and agility. Dynamic Practice Organization works for all ages and levels of ability and makes a great gift to order now. Algunos los enfrentan con decisión y experiencia. Nosotros además lo hacemos con cámaras y micrófonos. Llegó Sports Center a ESPN Deportes. El informativo deportivo diario que analiza partidos, equipos y todo lo que te interesa a ti. Con los mejores periodistas y en español. Sports Center, todos los días por ESPN Deportes. ESPN Deportes, los protagonistas están cambiando. Safeguarded Florida from invading ships. Safeguarded Grandpa and John's relationship. Winter playground of America's rich and famous. Year-round playground of America's families. Ponce de Leon arrives to discover the fountain of youth. Logans arrive to rediscover each other. Where tour professionals earn their stripes. Where Tom earned a newfound respect for them. Something happens when you experience this place. You return home with a new perspective on your relationships, your ancestry, and maybe even your life. St. Augustine, Ponte Vedra, and the beaches, Florida, where you see different things and see things differently. Call today for your free travel plan. Welcome back to NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite. 13 to bad luck number, please, son. Not this year. For the first time in NFL history, 13 teams win at least 10 games. But for the first time since 91, a 10-win team, the Dolphins, do not make the playoffs. As for Sunday's game, interesting drama there as well. One coach goes back to face his former team, and one team goes back to face a team they just beat in that same location just a few weeks ago. Let's whip it NFL style, starting with Sal Palantonio and the Blitz. After being embarrassed back in October, Matt Hasselbeck gets another shot at beating his old mentor, Brett Favre. Hasselbeck spent two years under number four's tutelage, so he's familiar with the Lambeau mystique. But this is Hasselbeck's first postseason start, and Favre and the Packers are playing on a higher plane right now. Green Bay, what's more, has plenty to prove in this game. The last two playoff appearances were humiliating routes in St. Louis and here where the Atlanta Falcons handed the Packers their first postseason loss at Lambeau ever. 
Favre, too, has plenty of personal motivation to win this game for the memory of his father and also for his personal legacy. In his last two playoff appearances, Favre has thrown eight interceptions. In Indianapolis, I'm Ron Jaworski. The constant for the Denver Broncos this season has been their defense. Despite season-ending injuries to linebackers John Mobley and Ian Gold, Denver ranks number three in the AFC in total defense. Defensive coordinator Larry Coyer has done a masterful job with this defense, especially on that December 21st meeting against Peyton Manning and the Colts. He kept Manning guessing by disguising his blitzes and his three-man rushes. Kelly Herndon was very effective blitzing off the edge, and Trevor Price and Bertrand Berry were very effective effective when Denver went to their three-man rush and dropped eight into coverage. In this matchup, the Colts must think of maximum protection to give Peyton Manning time to allow his receivers to work downfield. Back to the studio. All right, here we go. Sunday's game, Seattle and Green Bay, the 1 p.m. game. And Denver Indy at 4.30. Colts have lost five straight playoff games now. We talked about it. The Broncos just went in the, into Indy, and they won. <laughs> What's the hardest thing about going back to a place that you just won and trying to do it again? Well, I, I think it's to maintain the same kind of intensity that you brought to that game the first time around. It was a game that the Broncos absolutely had to have. I think the second thing is they didn't hide anything because they had to have that game. If you're the Indianapolis Colts now, your job, can you make the adjustments necessary to stop that running game and put that game on the shoulders of Jake Plummer? See, that's the kind of knowledge I like hearing from you. <laughs> and to hear more, you know what I'm going to watch in the morning? You're going to watch some uh, countdown. I'm going to watch some Sunday <laughs> NFL countdown. 11 a.m. Sunday. TJ will be there. Boomer's back in the house. Keys to the wild card Sunday. Torrey Holt live in the studio. But come back here and we'll tell you why rushing yards are not the most important thing to winning in the playoffs. Some like beers don't taste like anything. Next time, try a great tasting, less filling Miller Lite. Good call. Nissan 03. It's been a great story. We brought you the rugged Xterra. Stylish Ultima. Tough Frontier. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Reliable Sentra. And powerful Pathfinder. Now we're bringing you the Nissan National Year End Event. Get 0.9% or 2,500 cash back. Because every great story deserves a happy ending. Yeah. To cure athlete's foot, you've got to be fast on your feet. And nothing lets you treat faster than Lamisil AT. Lamisil AT cures athlete's foot with just one week's use. Not even a prescription can beat that. If you use Tenactin or Lotrim and AF, you'll be treating for four long weeks. Who's gonna do that? When your feet itch and burn, using Lamisil AT one week is proven to kill the fungus and keep you athlete's foot free for three months. Lamisil AT, there's no better way to cure athlete's foot. Twisted Tricks, performed by the Action Sports Greats. Winner X Games 8 from Aspen, coming in January, live for the first time on ESPN. Hey, Tiger. Yo, Stu. How you doing? Good. We still on for lunch? Uh, yeah. What do you say? Meet me in the lobby at 12.30? Perfect. Done. See you there. Bye, man. Presented by Miller Lite. Grab yourself a great tasting low carb Miller Lite. And in part by Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. We always hear rushing yards is the key to the postseason. Why is that not true, Tom? It's actually rushing attempts. It's a team that really controls the game. Uh, since 1970 in the playoffs, 87% winners if you lead that game in rushing attempts. Rushing attempts. Something else interesting. Remember when Brett Favre went to his coach and said, look, we need to shift the, the focus from 
Me. passing to running. That's correct. Well, I'm on green, 1,883 yards, tied for seventh best ever. It worked, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Brett Favre still led the NFL in touchdown passes with go. 32. There you go. Running, passing works mm -hmm. for TJ. I'm Stewart. Peace.